everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, I'm going to be profiling for you my Cyber Dragon deck. And I hope I do Zane Truesdale and Cyrus Truesdale proud by doing this deck profile, because I've always been a fan of Zane in the GX anime. And, because he kind of is reminiscent of Seto Kaiba. But, um, we're going to get into this Cyber Dragon deck, guys. I really have always loved Cyber Dragons, ever since they came out with Cyber Dragon. Uh, netic revolution i've always felt like cyber dragon kind of broke the mold back in the day it was a very broken card you may not understand in this era of the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, but back then special summoning a 21 free beat stick for nothing was very powerful in those days and probably one of the reasons why cyber dragon was limited for so the early part of Yu-Gi-Oh's hi uh, history was limited to one for a very long time also, I want to mention very quickly, guys, I only own one Cyber Dragon Infinity at the making of this video. I'm currently in the process of getting a second one, but I will admit I will probably redo this video in about three to four months and uh, redo it with two Cyber Dragon Infinity in it for an update video of you for you guys. But uh, this is a deck I've been playing a lot of um, since January, since Cyber Dragon Infinity came out and uh, Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon, I think it's called, uh, came out. I've been playing the heck out of that. But first off, we have our three Cyber Dragon in the deck. It's the mainstay of the deck. It's the heart and soul of the deck. Um, I have my my alternative one from the G Legendary Collection GX. The secret alternative artwork, which I really like. I think it looks really cool. And then my old Super One, which is one of the ones I used to run way, 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 way back in the day in multiple different decks. So, kind of the history of Cyber Dragons, and I love all the artworks. But um, I preferably like this, but I think this is cool at cool as well <laughs> but yes three cyber dragons there's a whole bunch of different combo plays you can do with that card and it's been a great card throughout Yu-Gi-Oh's history um, next we run three cyber dragon core it's kind of your stratos of the deck I will admit um, some people like running two of it I've seen but there's a whole bunch of different combo plays you can do with it uh, it can help search out your power repair your cyber dragon cybernetic repair plant which is kind of like your Rota for the deck to some degree, Cybernetic Repair Plant. Also, you can do plays with Machina Duplication. So what I can do is I can, if I have a core out on the field, I can go Machina Duplication and bring out two Cyber Dragons and then overlay into a rank five. So that's something really you can do. You can go into this, bring, bring out Volcasaurus, go for game. Uh, you can bring this out, go into Nova, then go into Infinity. It's just, just a whole bunch of different plays these two combo cards open up in the deck. Um, but yes, very, very good card, and I do like it as a three of in the deck. Next, I run three Cyber Dragon Zway. Excuse me, uh, Dre. <laughs> Dre, not Zway. Uh, yeah, this is Dre. Dre is pretty much... I, I will have to admit, he's kind of like your uh, rank 5 playmaker for machines. Granted, at the time of this making of this video, we only have literally two machine good monsters that I actually run that are rank 5 at the moment. Uh, that is Wind Up Zimayo, which is pretty much your back row popper. And then you have Nova, which can help you lead into going into Infinity and just doing a whole bunch of different other things. Uh, but those are really your two machines you go for with Dre. But he's a good beater. I've used him for that many times. Um, his restriction is you only can go into machines, really, for the most part. But he makes all your Cyber Dragons rank 5, so you can do plays. Also, I mean, I've used him for Fusion Fodder. so he, He's very good, and I definitely like him as a 3 of in the deck. Some people like 2, but I like 3. Next, I run 2 Zwei. Um, this is something I used to run as a 1 of originally when I made this deck profile about a year and a half ago. Uh, after testing with the new support and things of that nature, I guess you could say. I kind of like running this card as a two of now uh, for multiple different regions. For fusion fodder, uh, which is something I'll explain more into because you, your main play of the deck, if I may say, and the thing that goes for OTKs the most is Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon. This card is your OTK playmaker. Uh, Infinity is good. Infinity is great. And you would run two of it. But it's Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon that wins you games, more or less, I find. But that's beside the point. Uh, but Cyber Dragon's Way, very, very, very good card. Not a very, very good card, but it helps you go into other combo plays, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, next, we have two Galaxy Soldier. And this card is your rank 5 playmaker. By discarding one light monster from your hand, you can special summon this card. He helps you go for rank 5 plays. He is searchable also because he's a level 5 machine. Woo! Thank you, Konami, for the synergy. Um, 
<laughs> kind of, I'll admit something after this. Uh, but yes, you can. He's actually searchable by Cyber Dragon Repair Plant. So that's why I only run two of him. You could run three of them, and I have thought about running three of him. But when I run three of them all the time, he gets a little bit cloggy. Um, so I just like running two of them because he helps go for your rank five plays. But I find it kind of ironic uh, that you know, kind of how like you know, there's always a protagonist in Yu-Gi-Oh somehow, and Zane was the protagonist to pretty much uh, Jaden in GX and uh, Kite from uh, 5D, uh, it's not 5Ds, oh my gosh, uh, Zexel was the protagonist to Yuma and I'm playing two protagonist cards in a deck. And it's fine, kind of ironic, but that's just that's just probably me. But two Cyberne uh, Galaxy Soldier, you could run three, but like I said, I get it a little bit too cloggy. And the last monster I run is a little bit of a tech of mine. It really comes in handy. Oh my gosh. It's a rank, a level four uh, machine, light. And this is came out of, I think, Yugi's, not legendary world, but uh, it came out in November. I forget what it's called. Like legendary decks, I think it was. It came out with uh, the reprint of Demok with the errata. This card is really, really good. I'm going to read you what it says very briefly. Uh, during your opponent's battle phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard in the battle phase. This is a quick effect. You can only use the effect of Electric Magnetic Turtle once per turn. This card really comes in handy because this is a light monster, so I can use it to pitch it with Soldier. So I can go pitch this from hand, have Soldier. If they try to, if I didn't make my entire push that turn, so say I, um, you know, I made a push, I didn't quite finish them off. But I sent this to Graveyard, or I have this in Graveyard. I can banish it, and I won't be destroyed that turn. And then I can continue to maybe beat them down. Granted, I know that's kind of situational right off the bat, but this card, once you start playing this deck, you'll understand the applications of this card and how good it can be in the deck and how helpful it can be in the deck just in general. So I will say that. Uh, really like this card. There was a one of in the deck. I ran it over the third so Galaxy Soldier, but that's just me. Uh, next, I run three cybernetic repair, uh, cyber repair plant. Um, I want to cut this down to two of, but I like it as a three of for some odd reason. It's a very good card. It's an amazing card. Um, it's very easy nowadays to set uh, the cyber dragons up in the graveyard. So when this card originally came out, it was kind of harder to get the effects off, I found, unless you built your deck a certain way. Nowadays, it's a lot easier. So... I definitely like it as a three of, but um, I may cut it down to two. I'm still debating it, but I definitely like it as a three of. Uh, next, I run two Fusion Conscription. You could run this as a three of in the deck. Uh, I'm not lying, and I'm still considering that after I saw a couple of decks that I was testing out like a couple months ago. I was like, oh, let's try Fusion Conscription because there's some combo plays you can do. So I'm going to read to you what Fusion Conscription does because you may not know what this card does, and then we'll talk about its applications in the deck. Reveal one Fusion Monster in your extra deck. Add that Add one of the fusion materials listed on that card from your deck or graveyard to your hand. And if you do, for the rest of the turn after this card is activated, you can't normal summon slash special summon monsters with that additional mo monster's name, nor activate their effects. You can only activate one fusion's prescription, prescription, <laughs> conscription per turn. So you may say, what the fud? Why would you run that? You can't even special summon the monster that turn. It doesn't say fusion summoning now, does it? <laughs> what I mean by that, Power Bond says you can fusion summon from the hand or field. So, this is a Rota searcher for some of those Cyber Dragons like Zwei and whatnot. Well, not Zwei necessarily, but like Cyber Dragon. And I can add back from the graveyard too. So I can go for multiple fusions per turn and um, just go off with more Power Bonds or fusion summoning because it doesn't say that. So, I like it as a two of. It's a rota for the deck to some extent, but I found three got a little bit cloggy, but two was good. You can try it out as a three of if you want to, but it's a really good card. You just have to know how to use it, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, next, I run three Power Bond. Amazing, 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 amazing card. You don't need limit removal in the deck anymore. I'm just going to let you know that right now. I do not run that card in the deck because this, along with... Cameratech Rampage Dragon, it, it's game. 90% of the time, it's usually game, I find. Um, it, You don't need uh, limit removal anymore. You can run it. Be my guest. 
but I found that it was just icing. It was the cherry on top. You would just, it was overkill to some extent, where a power bond would just put in the work for you at the end of the day the most. Uh, but three power bond, I hope one day they make a searcher for this card, but I highly doubt it. <laughs> it's, it's a very good card. Next two, Machina Duplication. This is for your combo play with um, Core. Like I showed you earlier, that's your main combo play with Machina Duplication, and it's very, very powerful. Um, and like I said, you can do it multiple times, so I just like it as a two of in the deck. Three of is a little bit too much, I find, nowadays. Then we run two Instant Fusion. Uh, this is for Panzer Konfagen, or which is the name of a Panzer tank, a Panzer tank from World War II, but as you guys may know it, Panzer Dragon and Parasycroid, and this card is stupid. <laughs> I'll talk about this in a bit, but yeah, these are your two main fusion targets for instant fusion um, Easily helps you go for rank fives and things But yeah, that's your main two targets for that Helps you go for rank fives, etc uh, Thank gosh, I didn't get hit to one uh, That would have really been a problem next I run two twin twister uh, twin twister helps you pave the way so you blow your opponents back row away you special summon all your cyber dragons and you push all those cyber dragons down your opponent's throat. That is what you do. Plus, it's a nice discard outlet because you can set up things in your graveyard. So, by sending a cyber dragon to the graveyard, it really doesn't matter because you have fusion conscription can add it back if you want to go that route. But more or less, it sets up for cyber dragon repair plant by sending cyber dragons to the graveyard. At the same time, it's kind of nice if you send electric magnetic turtle from your hand to the graveyard and blow up some back row. Free pluses. So, yeah, I'm just going to say that. It's amazing in the deck, and it really helps with OTKs. Next, I run one Overlord Fusion. Uh, excuse me, not Overlord. I've always called this card, for some odd reason, I've always called it Overlord Fusion instead of Overload Fusion. I do not know why, I just do. But this helps you go into a whole bunch of different things. Mainly your Chimera tech. Then I run Regeki and Dark Hole. Uh, Dark Hole, I'm kind of iffy on. It's a 50-50 card because I already have Regeki. But the premise is, along with Torrential Tribune, I do run the deck, which you may find kind of iffy because it's not a good card, is the way this deck wants to work and the way it functions is an OTA, a OTK-based deck. So I go Dark Hole, clear your board, okay? Clear your board off, just like you used to do back in the day with Dark Hole. Special Summon all my monsters, and try to go for an OTK that turn. It doesn't matter how many pluses you get in your hand or whatever, as long as I can kill you that turn. Regeki, the same premise. But I'm still debating the Dark Hole. Uh, Torrential Tribute, I'm finding because it's a trap to some extent, is a little bit better than Dark Hole because you can activate it on your opponent's turn, disrupt their plays, and then you can go off on your turn. While Dark Hole is a spell and you can't activate it on your opponent's turn, if you get what I'm trying to go with that, it's not so much as a, of a surprise factor. Um, so I'm kind of debating it, but I do like it in the deck at the end of the day. And it's narc targeting removal. One upstart goblin. Uh, this was the card. I was mentioning earlier that I had to not do this deck profile before the ban list. I was going to do it. I ran three upstart goblins because you didn't care about life points. Just draw cards, get to your combo plays. But definitely won the one upstart. It's still good. Foolish Burial, set things up for Cyber Dragon, Repair Plant, whatever. Then your deck out, send things to the graveyard, and One Day of Peace. I added this back in the deck because the Upstart Goblin was gone. The reason why you run One Day of Peace, and you may say, well, this is an OTK-centric based deck. Why wouldn't you run One Day of Peace? Well, good friend, what you do is you go for Power Bond, you attack your opponent, then you activate the One Day of Peace on main phase two. That's how that works. Uh, if I remember the ruling correctly, because what you can do is you can go for Power Bond. Uh, so you go for your Power Bond play. You activate your Power Bond. You know like how you're going to take all that damage by activating Power Bond? You go for your OTK, and you attack all your opponent's stuff. And if they're not dead, you activate that one day of peace. That way, you won't take damage in return, and you get a free draw. So it's something I'm debating about taking out, but I do like it in the deck. It does come in handy. Uh, next, I run the Solemn Brigade, two Solemn Strike, and a Warning. Um, yeah, but by the way, I just added the One Day of Peace back in the deck recently, so. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's how that works with uh, the one day of peace play, if you didn't know that. But uh, solemn warning, two solemn strike. I apologize for the plane going overhead. Dang you, Drago Sack. This is not your profile. Um, but two solemn strike and the warning. You use a lot of life points, but they're good. Torrential Tribune, Compuls, I mean, excuse me, a Bottomless and Vanities. The reason you run these, Torrential Tribune, like I was describing earlier, you clear your opponent's board, you go for an OTK. Bottomless, it's a good staple trap. And Vanities, you make a big monster, and then you flip the Vanities. It's a thing you can do in this deck and still win games. So that's why you run that. On to the extra deck. We run one Cyber Dragon Infinity. I would run two if I had to, like I said. The two Cyber Dragon Nova, I still go for two because the card's just on its own is actually still a pretty dang good card. So I do like it as a two of in the deck. Um, that's for those. For your rank five exceeds, the Wind Up Zimayo, which is your back row popper, your Constellar Pleiades, your Volcrosaurus. Those are your rank fives I run. Those are the ones I like running. Some people like running some other ones, but I like these the most. Uh, then we run Khmer Tech Rampage Dragon. This is your pretty much boss monster of the deck. This helps you go for OTKs. This card is amazingly good. You blow things up. You go... <sighs> Sets up your graveyard. Oh my gosh. Amazing card. Amazing, amazing card. Cyber Twin Dragon. Cybernetic in Dragon. Now, if I had the second Infinity, I would either take out the Cyber in Dragon... Or another Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. So I would either take out one of my Chimera Tech Fortress Dragons or my Cyber End Dragon. Personally, I'd probably take out the Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. Just saying. But we run the Cyber Trend Dragon and the uh, Cyber End Dragon. This card is very good. If they notice, if they solemn notice this, you get the effect off and you can bring one of these bad boys out. Just let your opponent know that. Um, that's why I, that's the ruling I have been to told. So if I heard that wrong, please forgive me. Then I want one Chimera Tech Overlord Dragon or Overload Dragon. I always call them Overload Overlord. I don't know why. I mean, when this card originally came out, they were showing Avatar: The Last Air Airbender, and they did have you know Overlord, you know Overlord Zoz, whatever. <laughs> I've had too much fun with this deck profile. One Parasycloid, one Panzer Dragon. Or as I've always called him, Panzer Konfagen. Uh, because Panzer, if you're German, you understand or you know World War II, you understand Panzer, you know, the tank. Uh, Panzers. So I always call it Panzer Konfagen or Panzer Tank. Um, but Parasycloid, this card wins games because it requires only two machine monsters and it can attack your opponent directly. So you can go for Power Bond into this thing and then attack your opponent for game. I have done that. It is stupid and it is awesome that they got killed by a bike <laughs> with eyes. So yes. Uh, and the lastly two Chimeratech Fortress Dragon. Uh, we run this card mainly because this is for if you're running into like meta decks like Cosmos because this wins you game. This wins you games. Straight up. This wins you games. So that's why we have that in the deck. But uh, like I said I would probably take one out if I had another infinity because I like it. But yes, guys, that is the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed that. I had fun doing that deck profile because, it's, and I've had fun playing this deck. It's so fun to play. It really is. But till next time, guys, take care. Have fun dueling. Good luck dueling. I hope I explained everything well in this deck because it is a combo oriented deck. It may have some problems now that upstarts at one, but I still, it still functions very well uh, with all the searching it can do and dumping things to graveyard and thinning it. It's, it, it's a well-rounded deck still, I find. But till next time, guys, take care. Have fun dueling. Good luck dueling. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.